thing. What they showed me last, I knew there must be some connection, but I had no idea where they were going with this, right? Each of those stages, the nine stages uh, of the natural expansion, is when the sextant clock is plugged in to us, is one stage of escal escalation that leads up to a final direct attack and the I destroy you stance, right? Now, there is a hidden victim-victimizer game going on here. There is an aggressor and there is a target. What's kind of funny is, or sad funny, but with the 666 program, where first it goes forward, then it goes backward, then it goes forward again, you end up with whoever was the, the victim in one, then it reverses and the other one is, then it comes back and does the other way again. So there's this, this polarity shift at the end of a cycle where who is the victim, he who is first will later be last kind of thing, and he who is victim will later be victimizer, that kind of program. And it's been running and it affects everyone because it is coded directly into the outer domain Rosetta. It is literally coded in as a fighting code, as a program, as if somebody up there out there com computer programmed and put microchips in, in a set of farm animals to make them go do weird things to each other every once in a while on a regular basis. Okay, That's what it's like. We don't have the chips exactly in our body as if somebody put us on a slab and stuck a metal piece in us. We don't need to because we have metatronic crystals where our own crystals have been taken, part of them, harvested through the 666 cycle, turned into uh, hexagon-shaped crystals that are an unnatural configuration. I mean, you see hexagon-shaped crystals are always floating around in... Uh, in, in the atmosphere, even on Earth, they cause things like um, the effects of moon dogs and those kind of things. They have to do with hexa hexagonal ice crystals and those kind of things in the air. And the, these are not natural phenomena. They shouldn't be here. And they shouldn't be in our bodies either. So the, this victim-victimizer game is running through mutations in our key structure, which means it's running through, through mutations that are carried in our skin, our bone, and our blood can't get much closer to home than that, right? And of course, well, actually you can. It's one step closer. <laughs> They're carried in our seed atom, which runs our ruchete of the outer domains, right down through our private parts. So every, whenever a baby is conceived under these conditions, the mutation and the victim-victimizer consciousness is imbued right in to the cellular code. So this is a major program. If you look at this world and say, why for, for history, all of history, all of known history, why has everybody been fighting with each other? Well, <laughs> there is an explanation. And it also has an explanation to do with, particularly since the fall of Metatron, where the Metatronic code was put into full operation in this matrix. It just created a game out of it for certain people. But it's not a game to the people who have to live it and suffer it and die through it over and over and over again. <laughs> All right. It is a net, and it is a net we can begin the process of breaking. I just want to show you some of the postures and stances, because this you may find some of them. I, I look forward to when we get the whole profiles out on them. That's one of the things I want to be able to finish first, so you can spot it when it's coming. Right? When you start to find yourself saying certain things, going, uh oh, wait a minute, redirect. You know, that sounds like I'm being a victim. Because if you're playing victim, it means you got a victimizer. You've engaged the game with someone. If you feel victimized, if you feel uh, aggressive towards someone and you're being mean or whatever, or just thinking mean, right? You are still holding an aggressive, aggressor energy toward the other person. So these things are, and they run subconsciously. They're like your elemental force taking part of your mind and making it do other stuff. And every once in a while it comes out your mouth and gets you in trouble. <laughs> and then you kind of go, what did I do? I did not. I didn't do that. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you didn't. Yeah, forget it. You get into these weird loop arguments where there just is no solution. And you can look at each other, two people engaged in it, and you think the other is absolutely nuts or completely possessed at the moment. You know, I mean, it's something. But it's actually, I mean, you can get attachments. There's all sorts of attachments that will connect, connect to the field through these imprints, because these are held in the telea spheres. Remember, you have a telea sphere in your crystal body on each of the dimensional levels and density levels around you. These have, would normally hold in little gelesic points, right? Little ors and ls would hold the um, natural 
program of your expansion cycles and your memory matrix. Every, you have a relationship energetically with everything you see and everything you manifest through yourself, through your body. And that it is stored as an imprint within the crystal body, as a radiation imprint. And when, with the sextant clock, what it does is it puts a false memory matrix into the entire crystal body structure on the full three-dimensional level. So part of that false memory structure is the fight or flight instinct. It controls the chemicals that create the fight or flight instinct, which is completely out of proportion to what it should have been. It, it, it's it, like almost a detriment to survival at this point because everybody is so you know, over chemically reacting to fight or flight that it, it actually hampers other levels of understanding where neither fight or flight are needed option. You know, we're not like, you know, like amoeba that need to worry about what's going to eat them next, technically speaking. So the fight or flight instinct, the way the brain chemicals work, as well as the hormones and other things that affect other parts of the body, are all connected into this. So on those currents you have riding this game, and it's like somebody's malicious idea of a, you know, of, of a virtual reality persona game on the internet, because if we're the internet. Okay, the victim, victim, victimizer, the victim, victimizer game, stage, stages, encrypted in the key crystal set. They are not just encrypted in the crystal body. The re that way they get into the crystal body as encryption is because they are encrypted into the keys. Part of the keys that we carry are carrying these encryptions. And what's interesting is these before showed you the key sets, which cycle they were generated on, how many keys, etc. Right? This shows you which part, which program of the victim, victimizer escalation is carried in which set of keys. Now, we've moved through these most recently, and we are coming up. Here's where we are now, start October, that's here. Right? We're going for birth of the, e, the uh, e, Adon, sorry, birth of the Adon, that means we're starting this set. It's affecting the planet as well as the indigo shield. Now, it starts here with the Taran codes and stuck in them as overlays. You have VV1, this is called, in this one you have the aggressor, the, the A stands for the aggressor and the T stands for the target. And some of these are very, very difficult to tell who the aggressor is or if there is one, and that's what they're meant to do. All right? The aggressor is the buddy, right? Oh, I'm your buddy, I'm your friend. Oh, yes, I just think you're real. Let's do stuff together. I'll just hang out with you, right, right, right? There's a weird feel to that when it's running because you really think, you kind of go, seems really nice, why do I feel weird? Seems really nice. Why do I feel weird? Right? Because <laughs> you can't really tell if they're nice or if it's you. You know, is it something wrong with me today? I don't know. Yeah. So it's it's a trickery one. It, the objective of it is the the objective is victim submission through seduction, being seduced into thinking you're actually their buddy. Right? The type of target that buys into or has the receivers for this is the one who has the lone child victim program running. Lonely alone in the world in a big, big, awful, scary world and I really don't like it here. I really wish I had a friend to be with me because I don't like being here. All right, something like that is a program that's a stuck spot. A lot of people ended up in as children because they were feeling that, right? And that stuck spot was a perfect spot for the game to engage where People who are stuck with that and not realizing they're that they're actually transmitting that pattern, They've, it may take a while to even realize it in yourself. I mean, a lot of these patterns, you don't even realize you have them, right? You might find anger layers on top of them before you get to the fact that, that the anger is really about your feeling hurt. And, you know, like there's layers to emotion that if we, as we learn to work through them, we'll start to understand this, this stuff more. But these games will run through the subconscious, through the chemicals, where you have the buddy and lone child. The buddy is the aggressor, but doesn't appear to be, just seems so very nice, right? And do anything for you. <laughs> yeah. And not always just anything, sometimes just, I'm just a good guy or a girl. You know, I'm, yeah, just me. And, oh, I really like you. You seem really mellow. Yeah, I'm really mellow. <laughs> yeah. All right. And lone children really like that. Oh, this one's safe. I feel safe here. 
I feel safe here, that's good, right? So if you need to feel safe, and it's, it's a real strong pattern that, that draws you into relationships, realize that that has a bit of a kick from, you should be able to feel safe as you, with or without a relationship, whether you're alone in the world or not. If you're fully embracing your connection to Source and Spirit and the Christ, eventually we'll all get there. <laughs> right now we still have a lot of emotional twisted stuff from trying to live down here, among, in, in a crazy world, basically, in a prison camp world where you can't tell who's, the, who, who's your friend, who's, who's not your friend. So we're overcoming these patterns, but that's, that's just the beginning. That's just the first engagement of progression. We just, I'll be your buddy, and you be the one who needs me because you're so lonesome, and I'll make you feel all better. Right? This is the false friend stance, and it's covert control via feigned uh, allegiance. Okay? Oh, I'm just, I am your ally. Don't worry about it. I'll, yeah, we'll hang out together. It's like, to the end. Yeah, right? People will run this while, well, while FAs are running them. And it is insincere, particularly if they're possessed ones. Because the possessed ones get in there and they, they have fun with the game. Right? They actually enjoy it. The, you know, the FAs, they actually, well, they like to feed. And they know that's how to do it. It works. It's a pattern of engagement of energy through behavior and action and words and field stance that allows one being to suck energy off another. And it's been programmed into us, so we, we fall into it ourselves without meaning to. But when we fall into it, we also become very, when it turns on, let's say, when it cycles through and we get a burst of it coming through our pattern, and it will cycle through our life at different times. It will have peaks and lows and that kind of thing. When, when that comes through, we are most vulnerable to getting FAs attaching to us and trying to get into our bodies because they will ride those currents when they burst through in, you know, like burst through his little pulses of energy through the crystal body and into the crystals that our matter body is made out of. So that was level one. I'm just going to go through these quickly because I could talk for a long time on each one of these. What? Is it? Okay. Okay. They're saying wait till it's lighter. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll come back. I guess we'll have to do and come back in and finish and do the other bits. Does it matter? <laughs> and they said, no, it doesn't matter if you pick up or drop off first as far as what goes out there. And the water will help, as will the salt. Huh? Okay. Anyway, three-way conversation. Yeah, it, we, we don't want to miss, totally miss dawn by spending the next two and a half hours in technique. So we will do the dawn thing on the beach when the light comes up a bit, and then we'll come back to finish the, the full activations, because they said it doesn't matter which way it goes as far as outside first or, or not. Um, uh, I need the one with my scribbles on it, though. Uh, is it? I thought you said you had to edit some of those out, like shorten them. Uh, I, need, I need them the way they were. Okay. Yeah, but I might lose it because I had it worded a certain way. <laughs> Thank you. It's not as pretty, but... <laughs> Okay. Anyway, the VV2 stance, all right, or, or the, the engagement, the aggressor is the baby doll, and the target is the do doting do-gooder. So, oh, aren't I cute? Oh. <laughs> oh, aren't I cute? Oh, I'm really, really, oh, I really like you. I knew one of those. I won't name names. Uh, but it's an aggressor stance where you're actually trying to uh, get submission through seduction from the other, and from, from the victim or the target, right? So the, the target person would have the same problem of the person who dotes on others and likes to baby people and people who like to be babied around this program and just wrap mommy or daddy right around their finger and drag them wherever they want to. That kind of program. I won't go into all of these in depth because it'll be way too, you know, it'll take way too long this time, but we're going to go into these more in depth, particularly we're going to start at an FOL because we have to see this on a larger scale as far as the politics that are un unraveling on the planet right now. All right, so in the stance two, we have, it's called the false child stance. The, um, I didn't even categorize that yet. Uh, this is covert control via uh, feigned aggressor deference. Whereas, like, I'm letting you have the power. 
oh, you have, you know, I'm just, I'm just following you. And they're really not. Where they're actually, it's another submission, uh, su seduction for submission thing that's taken place. And that one leads to, and these will cycle, where you'll actually get, and it's funny in relationships, if you find yourself in one and you finally end the relationship, you'll actually pick up somebody that's right on the next one. And you keep cycling through, and it's like, oh, geez, not that again. If you look back at your relationships, you can actually see weird patterns. Like, why did I always pick the same boyfriend or girlfriend? Why? I mean, isn't there any relationship that will be peaceful? Like, how many times can it always be their fault? <laughs> it keeps showing up in my hologram, right? Right. So this is when you realize there's some pattern running because you start to see that you've actually, it's actually showed certain issues have come up repeatedly in different relationships, but they're the same issues, different faces, right? They have to do with these things, all right? Now, anyway, on the second one, we got the false child stance, covert control by a feigned um, uh, aggressor deferring, pretending they're deferring to, to uh, the person they're actually targeting. The next stage of, of defense, and you know what's really sad? is once you figure out what victim stance you've been playing, it changes the game and it ups it and you get the next aggressor level. So it always keeps you on your toes, whether you want to be or not. <laughs> so, and it's like they, say, they always say like, oh, the victim is actually the one that holds the power in a conflict. Uh, I don't believe that line, actually. We hold part of it. The other part's being held by the aggressor. So we actually have a piece of the aggressor inside of ourselves as well. So there's, a, like, if you're playing the outer victim role or the outer target role, there's a part of you that's actually being an inner aggressor and you're not expressing out here, but you're actually attaching to people's fields in an aggressive way that you don't even know you're doing. And it runs with this program and vice versa. There is a, an inner... Um, an inner victim or target inside of every aggressor. So it's a real nightmare. It's a loop of energy that's meant, that it's a no-win situation. It's meant to create complete reversal of, of, of the personal keys and to allow other things to take over your body and your existence. And it's been doing pretty well on this planet for the last number of centuries. We got uh, number, number three posture is, uh, again, it's uh, the objective, the aggressor's objective, is seduction through submission. Uh, no, submission through subduction. Uh, sorry about that. Um, it's called the hero savior aggressor stance uh, role, and the target is um, the helpless honey. <laughs> oh, I'm a damsel in distress, right? No problem. Dum -dum -dum -dum. Here comes the knights in shining armor, right? <laughs> and they can be male or female, it doesn't matter. It's not always male knights, and it's not always, you know, like females locked in the towers, that kind of thing. But if you're doing it, oh, I wish my knight would come and save me. Oh, dear Romeo, where are you? Right? When you're in that space, when you enter relationships, it, it, loving relationships, if you really look at what, how are you in relationships, if somebody videotaped you, pretend you videotaped yourself and you're watching it now, you can almost go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like if I look back when I was 16, I can say, oh, I was 16. But if I look back last week and I'm still going, oh. <laughs> Would I want that on videotape? Would I want to see that on, you know, like this week's funniest moment set on earth, right? Or would I cringe and go, oh no, got me again, right? So anyway, we got Hero Savior, Helpless Honey. These, these are the specific combinations, right, where, where these aggressors where will, these targets will attract these aggressors and vice versa. And that goes all the way through. Now, this one, level three, the hero and helpless honey, is the false parent stance, where the, the hero is actually pretending to be the protective and you know, supportive and nurturing parent. And again, it, the objective is covert control via the aggressor contrived dependence. And what was in there? There's an important word on there. Dependence and control, dependence, fear, amplification, and self doubt. Right. Um, fear, <laughs> contrived dependence, yeah, yeah. contrived dependence, fear, and self doubt. Right. So, what the aggressor is actually trying to do by, oh, doing all sorts of things for you. Oh, don't worry, I can take care of that. Oh, you don't have to learn how to pay your bills, honey. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. Things that appear to be good for you on the surface. 
but they're actually making it so you feel more afraid of functioning on your own or you feel or ones that say oh that's nice yeah lovely color as usual oh but that's all right yeah oh mommy or daddy forgives you and you kind of I messed up again what I do <laughs> you know it's meant to create self doubt to create fear of the world and dependence on the one who's playing your 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 hero or your false parent now and that's again just trying to get you to submit to their will so you they can direct your energy All right there's another one uh, next one at level level four this one starts to get fun the, now these have all been so far um, covert right covert control All right this one starts to externalize it a bit where the objective is for to create victim disorientation and fear all right this is the terrorist aggressor stance and the target for those are what are called the acrimonious achievers <laughs> right. well, well get into the, yeah born in the USA <laughs> the USA is running a big one on the acrimonious achievers and we're drawn in the terrorists we really are bless us I don't mean we don't mean to either this is what we're a stage we've been we've been at for a while on the larger time scales of how this game runs we're going to look at the profiles of these more so you can see more of the characteristics that go with each of these of these stances but there's terrorist and acrimonious achiever what the uh, the aggressor the terrorist is doing is the um, mm, false righteous stance all right you know we are righteous and you are evil we are we are good and you are bad we we are we are poor poor us look what you're doing to us kind of thing when really it's what's doing it to you but you don't realize it yet ha <laughs> right? this is overt control it's the beginning of overt control um, by generating fear, pain, confusion, and disorientation <coughs> by direct intimidation. Okay, you can find this in in relationships at home, where you you end up in like uh, relationships of spouse abuse, right? On occasion, the spouse may become a terrorist and like you know bash the other one up against the wall, or you know like like you know <laughs> drag them around by the hair, or do something else. It's overtly, obviously, excuse me, you're being aggressive, right? You hit me. I didn't hit you, right? You'll have these things that happen in relationships with people. And that, that's when it's moving into in the domestic violence spectrum. Some people get fixated, by the way, in one set of patterns and just keep looping it. And they will just go through relationships and relationships and relationships, cycle in that one pattern, one pattern, one pattern. It's like they got a skip in their six 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 record record where it just keeps going six 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 on that one cycle that it's on. Right? Yeah, and you kinda need to go whack and then you go, oh, okay, I'm on the next song now. Right. All right. So let's see. Yeah, that, that was the main. The main one of this is to create the the, the disorientation. Is one of the biggest thing here. It's meant to to catch to catch the the person off like or the person or the country off guard, and really create confusion and disorientation through fear and like you know an overt attack. But it's not actually the the thing that that's. Yeah, the, you're right. He said the righteousness issue is the key because it's a big, it is psychological warfare. All of these are psychological warfare tactics, actually. And the, um, the false righteous bit is that what this begins the process of is getting other people that are watching to think that the target is actually being bad and that the aggression that is coming at them is understandable and justified and that is a ploy and a stance that an aggressor takes in order to and these stances are taken subconsciously if you sat an aggressor down and said do you know you're doing this what are you talking about you know what I mean they probably pick one of the stances as an immediate gut reaction these run as gut reactions that people trip into and and do to each other all right and themselves so Anyway, we've got the terrorist, the acrimonious achiever. That one has the characteristic, the, the, the aggressor is uh, the false right, it's the false righteous stance, where it try, it, the, one of the core things is trying to begin the process of getting allies to, to thin out as far as the target goes, trying to isolate, begin the process of isolating the target, where all of a sudden the 
target looks at the the target looks like the bad guy, so I was losing friends, and people are kind of saying, "Well, I don't side with either of you, but yeah, that wasn't nice." I, and well, and just literally isolating the target. This is as you're moving toward going in for the kill on the target, right? All right, we have the next one. Next escalation level is called the possum, and it's the dead enemy stance. All gone, not there anymore, not a peep, not a word. <laughs> It's as if they're not there. Just play possum, curl up in a ball. Okay, fine. We're not enemies. There's no conflict. Right? This is a distraction technique. It's to distract and disarm the target. Right? It's uh, controlled by a covert deception that of um, aggressor contrived false security for the victim. So the victim starts to feel secure because they haven't heard anything from the enemy for a while. Seems like they're not doing their thing anymore. Seems they're not a threat anymore. So the, the target or the victim starts turning back toward what they might normally focus on if they weren't in a panic because somebody was, you know, they realized somebody was being aggressive toward them. So they just go back and go do their own thing and all of a sudden they think everything's okay. And then we move to the next stage of the game, which is... Um, the st sixth stage, and this is what we're moving into now. The aggressor stance in this one is called the snake, and the target is called the status seeker. And uh, I didn't have room on this bit to get into like some of the, the little bits of profiles of the the targets in these. I was just showing the you know the like characteristics involved with the aggressors mainly, but there are also characteristics that list. There's pages and pages of this, this stuff that list the characteristics, so you can see if you're being a victim and what you're actually doing. So you can stop it, and that will disengage the pattern. Either side can disengage, can disengage the pattern. Either side has the power to call it back. Now, what we got on six snake is the snake has a, the the objective is to disarm, and to disarm the victim, and also to get them to let down their boundaries, to open their borders, to let down their boundaries. The it's the false uh, the false truce. It's the Trojan horse stance. Hi, got a present for you. <laughs> Careful how you open that. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, they're all extensions of the other. Yeah, they're all a progression of sophistication in, in um, doing mental warfare on somebody, actually, in order to get control of their energy. And some people actually practice this. this uh, <laughs> they, they practice something very similar to this consciously, but the ones who do it consciously have usually had some kind of government training from some government or another. <laughs> These are taught, these are head game tactics as well that are taught on a conscious level. And, but most of us don't realize they run on a subconscious level and we end up playing these games with each other in ourselves and don't even mean to. All right, let's see. So here we have the, the control via covert deception of false resolution to disarm, to disarm the victim. So it's the fal it, false resolution. It, the victim is being, or the target is being deceived into thinking that the problem is gone now. We fixed it. Oh, okay, we agreed, right? Yeah, right, like the Treaty of Altair. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who might not know what I'm referring to, it's in Voyagers. It's about a treaty the Anunnaki broke that set in motion this whole lovely stellar activation cycle on the beast activation. So, anyway, next one. This is what we're moving into now. We're going to, so this means. Watch for these type of weird issues coming up in your life. It might be not with your lover or your spouse. It might be with your boss. It might be with somebody on the train that you never saw before. But these really weird, like sna I like the word snafus, that just come up in conversation where you end up somehow in disharmonic with someone. And it can really escalate to where it becomes violent depending on the situation. Ooh, we got a little bit of color happening out there. Yeah, I think... Okay, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do the, we're going to get ready to go outside. I'll finish this. When we come back in, then we'll go into the exercises that we're meant to be doing indoors. But I don't want to miss too much sunrise. It's starting where we see color, and that's the feeling I was getting was color. So, we still have to finish this bit. I just want to get you through the other couple stages of the VV game and then uh, retouch re base with the real quick run through on the, the body parts and you know, where things spark. And then we will go into the, the, the activation stage. And we're going to begin using some of the optical pineal things that have to do with the flames. 
that we covered in the, I think it was the Phoenix workshop. We might have introduced some of it in Denver, but we will be using optical pineal induction with some of the colored codes. They're still not perfected, but they're good enough to hold the frequency. So we'll finish up with this. <coughs> Sorry. What we left off with, I believe, was the where we are now entering the um, VV game stage six, which is the aggressor in the uh, snake posture and the um, target in the status seeker posture. And again, there's more things that will come in other workshops to fill out what those characteristics are. But the purpose, the aggressor's purpose here is to um, create the um, a disarming or opening of boundaries or letting down your defenses of the you know, of the target, and it's done um, through a false truce, a Trojan horse stance, where you're controlling by a, uh, by a covert deception of false resolution. And what, what it's meant to do is to make a, a being think that the problem is done, so, oh, okay, we get along now, so when you turn on them, you completely blindside them, they're just not ready at all. And it's to really um, set the victim, the, the victim or the target up for being knocked off balance easily once the you know once you reveal what you're actually up to and that's the number six number seven um, is the is the aggressor stance is the martyr and the target are the blind blamers that that's people who are actually harboring inner anger or the blind blamers where they don't realize that they're angry because they try to be so nice and they forgive everybody for everything but they don't let themselves really realize that they're they're angry about certain things inside of themselves, and they feel that they're not in control of their lives, and that other people are controlling their lives, or they can't do something because somebody you know is doing this, or somebody will get mad at me, or that kind of thing. And there, there's a sneaky part to the to that particular target stance where you don't realize you're projecting on anybody. You just feel sad or depressed or just kind of repressed and you can't figure out what's wrong with your life and it just doesn't feel right and you you feel like you're being victimized by other people around you or by your job or by circumstances like that. And what you're actually doing is is you're actually blaming uh, another person or an object or a government or whatever it is. You're blaming the other covertly for for you not taking control because you actually have adopted compensation patterns where in order to keep the peace or keep people happy with you and they often were set in childhood through this pattern where you learn to say yes when you should be saying no where you learn not to draw boundaries so you let other people overstep your boundaries and when you do that you feel victimized but it feels like it's the other person who's doing it when it was really you that didn't put your boundaries up in the first place all right you will have this program running but you don't realize it's in there you just you know there, there's an anger that's actually being transmitted that you don't see and that you don't realize is there and that's the that's the blind blamer one where you actually you're you're blaming other things outside of yourself for conditions in your life that you're not happy with or for feeling victimized but you don't realize you're doing it so you're blind to the fact that you're blaming and at the core of that is repressed anger and at the core of that is you're not taking care of your own needs where you're not sitting down and asking yourself what do I want to do about this or forget all the have to's have to have this job if I don't have this job I'm gonna die I'm not gonna have a place a roof over my head I'm gonna lose my life my children my you know my wife etc that kind of stuff there's so many have to's that it's actually the have to's that are what are taking your power but you're actually giving your power to them and don't realize it so just like that was an example of the target and the things that a target could begin to look at in themselves and fix to stop themselves from playing into the target patterns there's going to be at some point an evolution of this VV game so we can see it more clearly we can see what the both the aggressor and the target roles are and how we can begin to heal them and intervene directly so get direct control over what we're doing with our energy in our personal lives and it will make a lot of difference this is where we start really getting control of our projections even though we don't realize we're projecting them yet that kind of thing now with the with the uh, level seven <coughs> escalation the blind blamer targets um, are sought after by the aggressors that play the martyr role. Now, the martyr role is the false victim role, all right, where the target is made to look like the aggressor in order to further lose allies, to further isolate the target. This is con 
uh, covert control via what is called direct mirroring, okay? Where the, the uh, aggressor accuses the victim or the target of the same behaviors that the aggressor is actually doing. And sometimes they actually do it consciously. It's a head game, right? Where it's like somebody will be being nasty to you, right? And then they'll go into, and, and look at you. You're, you're just, you're being so terrible to me. How could you be like that? You're just talking to me in such ways. And you're kind of going, I am. <laughs> what did I say? Did I say something? Maybe I did. Oh. And you get confused. It's like baffle the brain type thing when you start the mirroring. And that's just the beginning of really baffle the brain when you get reverse mirroring, which is even more fun and nasty. Right? The mirroring is bad enough because in the mirroring, what happens, and that goes with the, the blind blamer martyr pattern. The martyr person, oh, poor me. Oh, it's terrible what you're doing to me. You know, that kind of thing. They play the, the poor me role and make it look like you've done something to them. When for the life of you, you can't figure out what it was. You don't know what you did because you didn't. But what they're doing is they're actually projecting their own behavior onto you and reacting to you as if you behaved in the way they are behaving. And it's really, that's a hard one. See, the further you go up in this chain of escalation, the more tricky the postures are, where they're harder to spot, where they just kind of leave you baffled and you go, what was that? Right? What was that conversation about? I have no idea. You know? What were we arguing about? Oh. Right? One of those. And if you're lucky, you can look at each other and say, what are we arguing about? And if you're lucky, the other one will go, uh, I don't know either. Let's call a truce, a real one, at least for now. We can pick it up later if we need to. You know, if you can do, humor is a great antidote. It's not a, a blanket fix, but it is a good way to lighten it up so you can disengage the pattern that's running through the subconscious chemicals. Where actually your elementals are fighting with each other through you. Where in worst case scenarios, you actually have more than elementals alone fighting through you. Where you'll actually have field influences coming and taking shots at each other. If you happen to have one person that has Anunnaki attached to their field and another person that has Drax attached to their field, <laughs> you're waiting for a world war right in your living room, right? <laughs> Now, if you can keep those influences out of your elements and out of pushing your chemicals around, where you actually start having their arguments. And, then, and you just kind of get lost and glazed in the process where you're, just, you're caught with the wave of emotion and they'll get all heated and all of a sudden your body is really angry and you're caught in your body so you feel really angry too and you, you don't really have the mental space anymore to stop and think, what am I angry about? What am I doing? What is this, right? You get a wave comes through. And when it's pushed by FAs attaching to your field, you can become like dueling banjos with even the persons you're closest to when those influences are playing. This is where element three comes in. Is it you? Is it me? Or is it element three? Because <laughs> right? if you can't figure out what you're doing wrong, that, that if you stop doing it, you could shift the conversation into a good space. And you can't figure out really what they're doing wrong either. You just realize you're starting to sling, you know, sling nonsense at each other. There's a feel to this where you can tell if it's just, you know, we haven't resolved this so, so we have a gripe with each other. There's a, a, a different feel, and it's all by feel. I can't even describe the feeling, but you'll know it when, when, you, look, when you know to look for it. There's a feel of element three at play, right? And element three will try to play you both, like... One, trying to move both little characters, like the person playing, you know, little kids like to play with dolls or they move mommy and daddy and they make them do things, right? That kind of thing. Well, element three can have all sorts of fun with itself and really mess with your relationships and your head by attaching to both fields and playing these victim-victimizer roles back and forth. If element three has an agenda where let's say one, one, one in a pair of people, or even it can be even in a crowd situation, where if there is a, a target that is causing a problem for the, the FA collective that that element three is connected to, and they have put out a contract on whacking that person astrally, they will actually try to attach to people that that person engages with and try to cause harm through it, which can be very dangerous if you're dealing with somebody that has, you know, like say if you're in a domestic situation, you have somebody that has a tendency on occasion toward violence. They can push that where it's not even the person that's, that's actually being violent towards you. It's the element three and their agenda trying to use their body to harm you 
okay? And it's a metaphysical battle being dragged into the physical. So there's a lot of weird stuff that happens with this game. Element three, again, is more than just a concept. It also has to do with things that attach through, and I would imagine that this program has something to do with running through the, the element called lithium, which is the, it has atomic number three. So anyway, we'll get back to these so we can get onto those, so we can get onto the exercises. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we have martyr and blind blamer, and that's the direct mirroring. Now, to boggle the mind more, when we get to level eight, see if you figure this out, and you, the, the trick to figure that out on, on the target point is to realize, no, I'm not doing that to yourself. I mean, you can tell them that, and they'll just argue with you. If somebody's trying to engage you in that pattern, you just have to realize, wait a minute, I'm being accused of something I'm actually not doing. And the person who's accusing me really thinks I am. So you don't get mad at them for accusing you either. You realize you have an element problem. <laughs> you know, your fields are having an element problem together. And one of the, what, one thing that the beloveds taught me that seems to work very well in certain cir circumstances is to say, I have no argument with you. And to just disengage in a kind and loving way, not huff off and slam doors and say, I'm never going to speak to you again, you know, that kind of stuff, because that just escalates it and makes it worse and actually escalates it, but only to a point where you just keep going in the cycle. But to break that pattern, it's, it's just, I have no argument with you, and mean it sincerely. Even though you might not like the behavior that's being thrown at you, or even if you don't like the behavior, you find yourself thrown in response, that kind of thing. Somebody has got to do the wake-up call in themselves and say, wait a minute, this is getting nowhere. And not run off in a huff and not like, you know, throw accusations or names at other people or, or, or blame the other person. What you got to do is simply step back, disengage, but not alienate the other person. Because it isn't their fault either. They're trapped in a pattern just like you have found yourself trapped in a pattern. And you can help both of you by gently saying, I have no argument with you, and helping to diffuse it on the outside. And then getting yourself in a space and start running some of your protection frequencies and reach to the highest space, wherever, if you call it God, if you call it source, if you call it, I like to go through several, several command councils and then go to the Unisci and then I go all the way to source. I try to make sure there's no little spaces in that network that any of the others can try to tap the line and mess with me. Right? And I just really run the techniques that I know to build my field and my strength and just say, I have no argument with you. With this person, I have no argument. Um, please, you know, assist, please source, assist me in, 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 in healing this for us. And you come at it from an us perspective instead of a, a me, I'm going to go protect myself from this person because they've been bad to me, right? First, yes, you do have to not allow yourself to be harmed. You need to get yourself out of harm's way. But then you have to get them out of harm's way, including the harm you will do by blaming them. All right? If someone is out of control, even momentarily, with their words or their behavior, and that applies to you as well, there is more that, that their, their core intention is not coming through. They're having help with their elements, and you can have help with your elements too. So if you can learn to not get flattened by people who are playing the aggressor role without meaning to, you can learn to hold your power better, and you will not help people that are stuck in the aggressor role to keep stuck. You'll actually help them to grow because you will no longer respond in the same way. If somebody throws an accusation at you and you say, well, yeah, but, yeah, 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 oh, they can go on forever and ever, where you're just throwing energy back and forth and back and forth and building charge and building charge on the negative, creating lots of food in the field for uh, you know, attachments. If you can say, I have no argument with you, and realize that you actually don't have an argument with that person. You have an issue with a circumstance that is taking place. All right, depersonalize it from the person and from yourself. Stop blaming either one of you and say, well, somebody's got to try to see what this is. Let's, let's try to fix this, but don't get over attached to fixer either. Sometimes you can't fix it, and you need to be able to accept that. If it gets so out of control where you just, you're constantly arguing with someone, or if you're getting violence thrown at you, or if you find yourself you're getting triggered into acting violently, then yeah, you, know, you can do fixer for so long. I mean, ask the Azurites; they should know. They've, they're, they're, they're the eternal fixers. We always come into things and try to fix it, try to fix it, try to fix it. I think we might have learned our lesson now. <laughs> okay, some things don't want to be fixed. <laughs> All right, All right. That is the next progression, I believe. Or no, there's one. There's one more in between them. So you go from the the martyr, blind, blamer stuff happening. You get into 
the next level, which is, is uh, level eight, the victim victimizer game. It is the aggressor stance of, they call it the magician, because it's like the most amazing mental sleight of hand. We're just sort of going, who's on first? What's the game? What day is it? <laughs> you know, because it's so confusing and hard to spot, right? And the now oh, the purpose of this again is to this one, the martyr blind blamer one, is the aggressor is actually trying to further isolate as, as fully as possible the the uh, target by making it very obvious outward. It's more like it's more of an um, an outward making you look like the bad guy, making the target look like the bad guy. Uh, some of that that's already taken place, you know, in our political drama on this planet. But that one is meant to get allies to back off and leave, leave the target isolated because they're not really sure anymore if the target is good or not or if the target's asking for it. All right. And it's, it is a part of the strategy, playing, playing the martyr, oh, the poor me, look what you've done to me, look what you're doing, and it's actually what they're doing. And you're, kind of going, and you're confused, like deer caught in the headlights, huh? What, wait a minute, am I doing that? And meanwhile, they're going, hee, 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 hee. Well, all the neighbors are watching and going, it's terrible that that person did that to that person. Well, look at that. It's like, wait a minute, that one did it to that one. No, that one did it to that one, right? And they, they, it's like squawking about the fact that the, the target they're actually after, saying, look what you're doing. You literally accuse them of the stuff that you're doing. But you don't do it consciously. That's what's freaky about it. You don't realize the behaviors you're seeing in them are actually what you're eliciting toward them. It's what you're throwing at them. And you don't realize it. So both people are disempowered by it. And these, with all of these, there, there are no winners in these games. It's meant to cycle where one flattens the other and the other comes back and flattens the other. It's like Punch and Judy continually. All right? Now, until finally you get to an end of a cycle, and then one wipes out the other. And then another set engages. So it's like... <laughs> it's like disposable players on a chessboard is what they've set up on this planet. The magician that goes with number eight, the magician, magician stance, goes with what is called the target of the sin eater. That's mea culpa, mea culpa, it's all my fault, it's always all my fault, I know I did it, whatever it was, I feel guilty no matter what I do, I don't know why I feel guilty. I didn't even do that and I feel guilty for doing it, but I didn't do it. You know, people, there's, there's certain programs where you take on everybody else's garbage and you feel bad for it. You know, you feel bad for all the terrible things everybody on the planet is doing to each other, or you feel bad in general and you don't know why. And it, there's the whole guilt complex that's associated with this, and it usually starts quite young, you know, from childhood, where you're made to feel bad, where you're getting stuff blamed on you that you didn't do. And you learn to say, oh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You can tell I have a bit of that program, at least you can in the early workshops, because I'd always come in and as soon as I, I'm sorry I'm late again, <laughs> right? You know, and finally I learned to say, thank you for being patient, which is a better way to hold my power. So, yeah, I've been working through these. Me and as I've been working through these, that could be really fun. You know, when we get, when you get two very powerful field people together, if you, this, you, you need to learn to control elemental command when you start to really get yourself into body. Because if you lose it and get mad at each other and start throwing energy, I mean, <laughs> sparks fly, that kind of thing. So you learn that that's not a good, you know, that there's a better way to manage that energy. But moving through some of this has allowed us to actually see the stages. We've moved through various of these stages. And I've learned a lot about holding my power, and Az has learned a lot too about holding his, in ways that we cannot let this ism, that is a program running, get control of us and, and try to rip us apart. Because boy, do they try to do that. For the six years we've been married, the one thing that the FAs did not want was us to stay that way. And we have, and I'm very happy about that. We're, we're, you know, fin we're going into our sixth cycle and we're doing really well. <laughs> we still love each other when they really, really try to make us hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, the magician is the fake empathy, I am like you stance. Where all of a sudden, you, you already got the person totally, uh, halfway confused, trying to figure out what is going on. I mean, did I do that? You're saying I did this. Did I do that? No. All right. They figure out, no, actually, I didn't. 
And they also figure out it's not going to help to try to convince the person who's accusing them that they didn't, right? So they just disengage that. That will flip it to the next level where the aggressor has to kick into the more sophisticated pattern, which is the magician, where all of a sudden, okay, that didn't work, huh? I tried to convince you that you were being bad, and I was going to lecture you, and I was going to tell you how bad you are, why, to make you feel bad about yourself, why? So you feel disempowered so I can move you where I want to, right? That didn't work. So they go into this. Whatever your posture is, if you're being rational and you've been calm through the whole argument, all of a sudden they'll be calm. They'll model the behavior and the stance that you're projecting. They'll model your field. The program will model your field. Where all of a sudden, you really think maybe it was you <laughs> that, was, that was acting quite nuts. Right? Because they seem very, very rational and completely like, them, like their normal self again. Like completely like a person you can relate to again. And, you know, they will actually play on the parts of y your own self that you most identify with. They will almost wear them as an armor where you see yourself in them. And when you see yourself in them, the will to fight or to defend yourself, we you start to think, it must have been me. They're making more sense than I did, I think. And it, it, at this point, you're really mentally confused by the whole progression, right? And you don't know who started this, where it started. Um, and you're starting to feel bad because if you did do something bad, if you did do something wrong, if somehow this nasty argument or this mess was your fault, you'd like to fix it, right? You, you'd like to stop whatever it was you did that you can't figure out what it was. <laughs> that The other person was very much telling you what it was. But you didn't think you did those things, so you, you stepped outside of that. And now you're in a spot where they're being really, really rational. And they're telling you what you want to hear in certain ways, and they're being calm and rational. And it's all right. Yeah, it, it, you know, sometimes, sometimes people lose control, honey. I still love you. That kind of thing. Wait a minute. <laughs> like, I still love you? Wait, wait a minute. You said you still love me. Because I lost control, right? Oh, here we go again. Are we back to the mirror again? Were you actually accusing me of what you did? Or this is like a double whammy where you get the mirror flipping back and forth, but you also get the reverse mirror where I'm just like you. I'm totally rational. We're absolutely fine. And the other is, yes, and I love you anyway, even though you were bad. Oh, yes, but that's all right. We all have these problems. It's enough to make you crazy. When you're seeing this, like one-on-one -on -one in relationships, when you amplify that by races of people and on planets, by billions of people on planets, and watch this stuff go into the politics, it's going to be absolutely nuts. It already is, actually, but it's going as this progresses and gets worse. You're going to see these stages manifesting politically as well. But in the personal life, it can be bizarre. Because if there's like stuck spots that like you and your, your, your significant other or whatever just can't seem to get past, there are probably issues. There's issues that aren't resolved in each of you that allow this to engage more fully, right? Now, the more issues in yourself you get solved and the more issues you solve with other people as far as, you know, Christic solutions, the less chemicals in the body, the less little miasms in the body the, um, these patterns will have to run through. So you'll get progressively more control over it. All right. The, when, when you have the magician who's like doing the sleight of hand, you can't tell if you're looking in a mirror, if you're looking at yourself, or you're looking at the other. You can't tell which one did what. And and what's really freaky is at this point where the aggressor role progressively you started to figure out someone was being aggressive toward you, and you figured out that you, you weren't actually being aggressive, but you were you know you were being you were being manipulated into thinking you were so somebody could direct you where you wanted to be. Once you get to that, that point, then all of a sudden they become totally normal and rational, as if it all never happened, which is enough to really make you kind of go, whew, what was that? What just happened? And they make sense, and they'll slip in little things that still, the little pattern will still pop up here and there that makes you really think you did it. And if you think it was your fault, where you start to, they, they empathize with you and your feelings now. They say, oh, you must feel upset about this, right? And they'll empathize and be your buddy and be your friend again. They'll put a little bit of elements of all the things coming up through. And, and, you know, I am like you. I understand that I would feel that way too. Then they'll add like little zingers of the mirror back in there. We go, yes, and you did this, but I love you anyway. Yeah, and it's just very, very complicated. You, 
it, 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 you don't solve these. These are the ones with, I have no argument with you, or um, I need to collect myself right now is a good one too. Like seriously, collect myself because I'm fragmented all over in my brain because I don't know what just hit me. Right When you go through a cycle of these, especially if they roll, because you'll find you might get stuck for 10 years in one pattern, but at certain points in time, you'll actually start flipping through them where it's like in one argument, you can go through them five times. And that gets nuts. Where you, you can't even know what what VV label am I on right now? Am I which am I the aggressor or the other one? I don't know, right? So these are going to be escalating in personal lives because of the threshold activation. But indigos, once we get the shield, you know, fortified through the activations that we're doing now and the activations that we'll be doing at, during the FOL, so we don't get stuck in the harness, we will progressively build an immunity to this. And part of that immunity will be being able to spot it and make conscious choices of how to redirect that energy in a loving way that serves both your needs but also the need of the other person, even if they are being aggressive to you. Because if they're being aggressive to you, there's a part of them that doesn't want that. But they're out of touch with that part of them because they're having interference. Everybody gets interference on this planet. Nobody is exempt from it. So you can find, if you can think higher, and higher is not just thinking about protecting yourself or getting your way, but thinking about how can I help us here, whoever the us is, even if you don't like a lot of things about them and it's a stranger and you'd like just as soon be mad at the other one. <laughs> Who cares? I don't like you anyway. Right, that kind of thing. But if they are still a face or a spark of the consciousness of God, a face that God wears, even if they're falling, even if they're acting, they're acting horrible, you can still respond with love in an us space from that space and honor them and yourself as manifestations of source and find a way to shift the energy. Don't leave it up to the other person because they might not be able to. You might be the only one that can walk in that situation and the other person might not have legs yet. So you need to help them through too. And that's the best way to get yourself out of it as fast, to heal it in yourself, is to help the other that's engaging it with you, but not pour yourself all over the other to the point where you're not taking care of yourself. It's really fun. It's, it's great training for learning how to handle your power and hold it with grace and dignity, when to use it strongly, when to use it mildly, when to step in, when to step back. And it's very good training but it's all, you know, for, for all sorts of things, but it's also very difficult to live through. And if you know that this is playing in your relationships, and it is playing, it is there. Some people have already mastered a lot of uh, the postures and they get along just fine. Or they've learned to compensate, where they have compensation patterns of odd little behaviors that kind of don't allow them to actually bring it into a full confrontation. Some marriages last for 50, 100 years that way, where you just don't face the issues. And you kind of live personas and you actually have your own lives and you're who you really are inside here and you like walk these little puppets around where it's like, hi, I'm Mr. So-and-so, hi, I'm Mrs. So-and-so. <laughs> and inside, you're both going, geez, where am I now? Yeah, I have a whole life here that you have nothing to do with and I like it that way. You, know? <laughs> you don't face the conflicts, that's not helping either. All right, that's just not giving this a chance to show and if this doesn't show, you can't fix it. So there are a lot of things to understanding this prog that this program is running that you can help yourself and your relationships with by realizing you can find a Christic solution and it will always be what's right for the, 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 each individual and the two individuals together. You, it is not an or situation. You don't have to save you or them. It's, if it's an or situation where it's you or them, one has to be a winner, one has to be a loser, it is not the Christic solution. It is trying to pull you into one end of the victim-victimizer game or the other. All right, so there is always somewhere, and it may not always be easy to find, a solution, at least in the personal levels, that you can find that will be the best for both involved in a conflict in the VV game. Now, the last one that I want to get to, oh, let's see, did I forget to read anything? Reverse mirroring. Oh yeah, by the way, this is, the, this is called reverse mirroring, that, that the, the fake empathy, the I'm like you now stance that comes after you're, you're accusing the other person of, of uh, actually doing what you're doing. So it goes from mirroring to reverse mirroring, from the martyr to the magician. And then the last one is the bully psychopath and the fixer. Fixers have one lovely characteristic about them, bless them, when you're a target fixer. You just keep showing up and keep getting up and keep standing up. Keep coming back to fix it, right? 
because you love the other person or because you value the relationship or whatever it is that motivates fixers. I'm still trying to figure out. <laughs> love is usually at the core, a desire to love, but it's also a love that can infringe on free will. And no matter how good the intentions of a fixer might be, sometimes you have to accept that certain beings or people or relationships don't want fixing. And after you've been like a punching bag for a while emotionally, or like you're on a seesaw or bang, bang, the relationship's never stable. You know, there's, it's like, oh, I got a good week. Oh, I got a bad week. Oh, I got a good week. Oh, I got a bad week. It can make you nuts for quite a while. Or where it's just like, poof, knock, oh, knock it down again. And you have that weight in the bottom or just go, boing, and you pop back up and go, oh, one back. <laughs> I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, <laughs> oh shut up already. <laughs> you know, because the more you do that, the more like, Oh, fun, I can play with you more. And eventually, throwing love at someone, that unconditional love, I love you anyway, no matter what, right? It's great. It's a great space to have. But if you're dealing with someone who's trapped in the aggressor pattern, that, because you're not doing the miracle, it's all my fault, and you can manipulate me anymore, you're just going, um, well, I'm going to stick around and we're going to talk about this because this has to be fixed. I'm not going to let, you know, I'm not, you're not going to walk all over me, but I love you. And I'm not going to leave either, right? When you get to that point, you may find it will do one of two things. It will either help the person who's been running this pattern to step aside a bit. Because all of a sudden, it's like, hmm, that didn't work anymore. They're not buying it. Okay, not feeling guilty. Uh, not doing what I want them to do. It's not working. Okay, well, I can have three options. I can run away. I can kill them, or, or, or maybe there's a third solution that's better than those two, and it might get them to shift a bit. Because you haven't gone away and abandoned them, but you also haven't, you're not letting them walk on you. So it's a really interesting spot for the target pattern to be in, because you can, you can get yourself killed right? if it happens to be you know, a person, particularly if there, there's a field interference that has a, a contract on you or something. And the person themselves may not want to hurt a hair on your head ever. But when this pot, pattern pops, there's so much energy, so many keys collected behind it as, as far as frequency goes. Because remember, this is, this is collecting keys or pieces of keys is collecting your crystals out of your body as it runs and is pulling them in, still in your body, but into the Metatronic configuration. It's going to pop when it hits these spaces. When it gets, when it moves into here, here's where you get a blast and like just literally a blast of frequency coming in where this gets quite strong in here when you start the mirroring and it gets really nuts through these phases of who's mirroring, who's mirroring, who you don't know, who's right, who's wrong and it exhausts the heck out of your energy and meanwhile you're getting keys drained at a more rapid rate and frequency drained at a more rapid rate. These arguments are cover-ups for something else. In these engagements, any engagement where people are talking with each other or arguing with each other, just like in making love, there's energy being swapped. When you get into these, you're actually ricocheting energy back and forth off each other, back and forth, back and forth. You're building charge, and you're building charge on a negative, which will, you know, negative reverse currents that are bouncing off each other and keep reversing because one's sending energy out and the other's rebutting it, and you're bouncing it back and forth. So you're really, really letting a lot of jewels. The more emotion you get involved, particularly if you start getting angry with each other, you're generating tons of key emissions or, or, or pieces of key emissions, light emissions, and those are going into feeding the metatronic, the reverse spirals, because when you are in harmony, what it, what love basically is a state of vibrational harmonization. When you feel love for someone, it is because you have a base pulse rhythm and a resonance of frequency, and they have a similar one, and it forms lovely waves that go like this, and then you can just, and it, they are expansive, and you just feel more yourself because you found such a connection with the other person that has that same type of encryption. The hatred is the opposite of that. It's where if, if let's say you're transmitting out love and you hit something that has a direct opposition in, in, in signature, let's say even just mathematical code in your field compared to someone else's, it will actually bring what was positive energy going out and send it back around and you'll whack yourself with it, and so will the other person, creates energy loops, comes back, and it gets stronger every time it does that. And it builds charge, and then the elementals get involved, and then the emotions get involved, and then the physical body gets involved, and it becomes a mess. So this is meant 
to actually create those. It's a way of harnessing kundalini, just like when sexual predators dominate their victim. They are trying to harness and grab that sexual energy and take it because they are feeding and something in their field is feeding or trying to. All right? Same thing with arguments. It doesn't mean, we'll never argue again. <laughs> never ever argue again. <laughs> no, that's not going to work because it's even worse to hold it in. All right, you need to find a balance. There's a balance between how much you're going to let come out your mouth and when you're going to go, no, no, no. <laughs> and take it elsewhere and decide before your elementals decide for you what's going to fall out your mouth that you're really going to regret. <laughs> I'm really good at that one. <laughs> I've learned to go, I have no argument with you. <laughs> and go away. <laughs> and going, <sighs> okay. And get rid of the charge on the energy, right? So anyway, this stuff, it, it, it's, this is just as much about sacred sexuality and the art of relationships and running your kundalini properly as looking at pictures with body parts and things from the Kama Sutra books in the stores. If this hits its worst where neither of them can step out of the, the fixer, the fixer might have to just say, okay, I love you but I can't fix this and leave. You know, five minutes or forever whatever, right? Um, the bully person, the, the other person is the bully role. It, it can go into psychopath if, um, you know, if, if, the fixer, if the fixer stays engaged, but it can also go on a psychopath if the fixer tries to leave. At this point, it tends to come into um, direct attack where the, the uh, aggressor will show that they are an aggressor and they will go after. When you're watching politics, this is what's going to, this is probably the scenario we're going to see after some really strange dancing we're going to watch in the media and the news over the next number of years while certain groups, the red and green dragons, go through this bit where who's mirroring who's mirroring who? Nobody is going to know. And there's going to be lots of talking heads on TV telling you everything about all the analysis of every argument everybody ever had in every council and it's going to mean nothing anyway because there's forces behind these that they don't even know exist so these people are not going to solve the problems this way but anyway now we'll get on to the good stuff this isn't well this is good stuff too but so anyway that was that ends in direct attack finally now each one remember there are six there there were a set of six uh, phases of these um, like one through nine then it flips again and goes back to one and one through nine uh, for six set, sets and then whoever was the aggressor becomes the target and it goes into the next set of six on the reverse right six the the nines uh, this is probably why that we've avoided sixes <laughs> i mean nines six times nine are 36 yeah um where you have another set of them going the reverse where who was the victim becomes the victimizer and then they flip again in the last six cycle of nine of these and in the last one that's when this escalates to the point of where bully it has so much charge behind it at that point it can go psychopathic and just go nuts and that's the point where certain things release in the system and uh, um, that that is where a, a big power play is made just like when we look at we're hitting the six axis now in that 666 alignment and we're going up into the seventh swing for FOL and it's there that a big blast comes in and the bully grabs us and just takes us or trying this is what their plan is this is what the program has them running where they would grab it right before seven and just whip it all the way around and take complete control of you that can be in a physical relationship you could be harmed you could be killed that could be um, uh, say in a, in, a, in a relationship it could be somebody like uh, deciding they were going to leave you and taking your bank account and everything else you own and all of a sudden you're, you're just left destitute and you don't know what to do next there's all sorts of ways that can manifest personally and politically so the, there's the escalation goes through the 666 cycle of the sextant clock now the good part about this is we can fix some of this by doing things that are fun <laughs> and one of them is learning to use the natural part of our anatomy that goes with the umshadi. Can you put that up, honey, please?